Hey there, friend. Are you looking to get into bullet journaling, but you're not really quite sure where to start? Do not worry. I got you. I have a couple of minimalist beginner friendly spreads to get you started. Welcome to my channel. My name is Michaela, but you can call me Mac. Let's just jump into some of my go to supplies for starting a bullet journal. First up, I would highly recommend using a ruler. It makes things so much easier to measure them out. And if you want to have super crisp lines, you can do that by using a ruler. I personally like using these clear ones so I can see my design or the dots on the page underneath the ruler. Next up, I really like using these Micron pens. They typically don't smudge or bleed through the paper and I like to use them in different sizes. So I have a 005, which is probably the smallest size that I use. I also use a 01 and then the largest size that I use is a 05. Sometimes I will use a 08, but typically I stick around a 05. I personally like to use brush pens to get some really nice thick and thin lines when I'm doing calligraphy or letter so I like to use this Tombow Fudenosuke brush pen and I also like to use this zebra brush pen. These are not necessary at all unless you're super interested in doing calligraphy and hand lettering then I would highly recommend these two. And how could I forget to show the most important supplies on this list? A pencil and an eraser. Those are my go-to supplies especially when I'm drafting out how I want my bullet journal to look before I actually go through and make things permanent with a pen. Today I am using a simple dot grid notebook from Amazon, nothing too fancy, just something that's super simple and straightforward. I will be sure to link all of the supplies in the description box. Starting out with the cover page, I'm just lettering 2024 and then a little quote at the bottom that says, this is going to be a great year. So this bullet journal was a Christmas gift for my brother who reached out to me last year saying that he was interested in starting bullet journaling. He was asking for a couple of tips. So for one, I wanted to give him a place to start his bullet journal journey, but I also didn't want him to feel too overwhelmed or stressed out about starting this journey so I filled out a couple of spreads for him just to give him an idea of like things he could do. He's super artistic so I know that his journal is probably not going to be on the minimalist side but just to get him started I wanted to show him how simple and easy some spreads could be. With that being said, one of the first pages I set up in his journal was a bullet journal reminders page. And this was just to tell him that this journal is a place for creativity, organization, and experiment. It is not a place for perfection. It is not to be a burden on you and it's not to compare to other people. And just to also remind him that there will be smudges, bumpy lines, and mistakes. And this is just a place to have fun and create. I know there's so many creative bullet journal spreads out there and they can be a bit intimidating, especially looking at a blank journal and you have no idea where to start. So that is why I'm here to help you and give you a couple of ideas. Moving on to the next page, this is the key that I wanted to set up for him. I like to use little symbols to denote like new tasks or like meetings and important information for me to remember, things like that. So I wanted a place for him to write down his keys. You will see that I keep some things in pencil again, because for me, I like to use like an open square to denote a new task. And then like I color in the square to show that the task is complete, but I know that everyone plans differently. So I just made the key section for him and he can fill it in with whatever he wants to actually track. But if you don't have your own key or tracking system, feel free to use this one. I use an open square to show a new task. If the task is in progress, I put a slash through the square. If the task is complete, I color in the square. If the task is canceled, I put an X in the square. If it's migrated to a different day or a different week, I will put a little like I guess like a little arrow sign in it. Um, I usually note events with circles and meetings with a triangle. I use a bullet point for any type of notes that I write and if something is urgent I put a little star next to it and if I'm not really sure about something or I need to research it I will put a little question mark. Sometimes I will use an exclamation point to show something that's important but you know sometimes a star is good enough it just depends on my mood. Moving on, I'm setting up his year at a glance page where he can see every single date for 2024 and plan out accordingly. I personally don't like to use these in my personal bullet journal just because number one, they take so long to set up and my hand is always cramping at the end of it. Oh my gosh. Oh. <sighs> Matthew, you better appreciate this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And number two, I found myself not really ever looking at that page or referring to that page. So I stopped using these a couple of years ago for myself. But again, I'm not really sure how he plans in his personal life. So maybe this might be helpful to him. 
on the right hand page I listed out the different months and I left little spaces next to them so he could write out events or birthdays or anything that's happening on different days and if he wants to he can like highlight each of the days on the calendar on the left hand side and then write the like event on the right hand side he can use this however he wants Next up, I wanted to give him a brain dump page that was just a space for him to write random notes, thoughts, drawings, like literally anything he wants to use this page for. He can just dump it right here. This is another page that I personally do not use in my bullet journal anymore because this gave me so much anxiety. <laughs> I always wanted my thoughts or whatever I wrote on this page to be like perfect or whatever I don't know so my page is like literally blank I never used it so again another thing I love about bullet journaling is everything is so personalized to your own self and your own schedule so Matthew might absolutely enjoy this page and have it full of words full of things and mine is completely blank <laughs> I love how you can just try things out and if they don't work for you, you just move on. <laughs> Next up, I'll be setting up his January at a glance. If you're starting out with bullet journaling and you're interested in doing it for more productivity and organization, I would recommend doing a calendar spread similar to this one so you're able to plan out the month accordingly. And if you don't like it, you can switch it up for the next month. For example, personally, this is another spread I don't really use in my bullet journals just because I like to have a little bit of fun with my cover pages. My bullet journal is really a place for me to be super creative and I personally like to plan out my schedule weekly and daily in my actual weekly spreads. If there's ever a time where I need to plan out the whole month in advance, this is typically the type of spread that I would use for that. I also set up a habit tracker for him at the bottom of the page just so he can try it out to see if he likes it. I penciled in some random habits and uh, colored in some boxes just to show him how to use the tracker. On the right hand side I left enough space for monthly goals and also like a monthly to-do list and at the bottom of the page I wanted to include an encouraging quote that says restart, rest, refocus as many times as you need to. Moving on to the fun part, let's get into some of these spreads. For this first one, I wanted to keep it pretty simple and straightforward. I'm going to start by lettering the calendar in the top left corner of the page. This is just to help like look ahead for the week, look ahead for the month. If he finds that he doesn't need the calendar for every single week, he doesn't have to incorporate it for the other weeks. Moving on, I just measured out six equal sections, three on the left and three on the right. I have Monday through Friday here, and then I also have a space for notes. I also have his weekly goals on the right hand side, and I also have like a look ahead to next week on the right hand side as well. I also have some space on the left hand side for his classes or meetings, as well as a section at the bottom for him to doodle. He loves to draw and doodle, so I wanted to make sure he had a space for that. And lastly, I'm going to letter a quote at the top that says, the best time for new beginnings is now. I really like how clean and simple this one is. If you really want to focus on laying out all of your tasks and your daily to-dos, I think this is a really simple, easy way to do it. Moving on to the next spread, I think this one's a little bit more involved as far as setup goes. I started out by drawing five equal boxes for Monday through Friday. Under each day, I allocated a section at the top for him to write any classes, meetings, study sessions, anything that relates to events would go here, and then any daily tasks would go in the larger part of the rectangle underneath it. I also left a section at the top for any notes that he would like to write for the week, as well as a focus section on the right hand side and a look ahead to next week. And then in the square box in the top left hand corner, I left a section for him to either continue doing a calendar or he could put any doodles or drawings or even like a quote or whatever he would like to put in this box. I think this is a really good layout if you want to focus more on your schedule as far as like events or meetings or classes or things that you want right up front and so you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing for that day. I think this would be a great layout for that. The next spread is probably one of my favorites because I've recently been enjoying planning out my day hourly, working on a task for an hour or so, then jumping to a new task and then maybe back to the other task. I don't know. It's just more productive that way for me. So for this one, I measured out five equal sections for Monday through Friday, and then I left a little section at the top where you could write focus items, but you can also use this for events, meetings, things like that. I also left some space at the bottom for a note section and then that little sliver on the side I left for planning ahead for next week. So for this one, I actually have this broken down hourly. So I have a line inside of each um, day of the week and then you can plan it out. For example, I have like seven o'clock to five o'clock and then that way you can plan out what you want to do between seven and eight, eight to nine, things like that. 
As I mentioned, if you are an hourly planner like how I've become, this is your go-to spread. This next spread is the simplest spread we are going to set up today. I separated each page into three equal sections and I have Monday through Friday here and then a space at the bottom for notes. And then I just wrote the day of the week on the left hand side and of course I just wrote notes at the bottom. I like this one if I'm just trying to set up something really quickly and I don't want to think about it too much, this is your go-to spread. This last spread is your go-to if you have rolling tasks. If you don't have tasks that you will finish in a day, um, but you will probably finish throughout the week or even throughout the month, I think this is the best way to do it. So once again, I'm going to incorporate our calendar section in the top left corner, but you can literally use this space for doodles or put a little quote here, whatever you want. I also have a section on the left-hand side for events. This is for any meetings, classes, any type of things that you want to track, and I broke them down by day. Since this is the last week of January, we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I have a section for February to just look ahead to see what else we want to plan for this week. Then I have a space for tasks, and this is where you can put all of your tasks. They don't have to fit, you know, daily or whatever. They can all go here, and then on the right-hand side, I have a huge section for notes. As I mentioned, this is your go-to if you don't necessarily like to plan your weeks out daily or if you have like rolling to-dos and rolling tasks. The last section that we will do for January is just sections for notes. I know we allocated some space on each page for notes, but if he spills over and he needs more space, I wanted to make sure he had that space. So the next four pages are strictly for notes. And I just wanted to set up really quickly a February layout design idea just so he can get an idea of like, it doesn't have to be the same. You can switch it up and do different things for different months. So for this, I'm going to stick with a calendar design, but I'm only going to track Monday through Friday. Here is a tip, especially if you're tracking Monday through Friday and you're writing a calendar out. Start by numbering all of the Mondays. Just go straight down, number all of the Mondays. So then that way, when you go to fill in the rest of the days, you won't accidentally write the wrong numbers because Saturday and Sunday are missing. Anyway, that's just the tip that I like to use. As you can see, I use these exclamation points at the bottom of the page to have a section for like important items or focused items that he can write here. I also thought that he would appreciate having a gratitude log, so I set up a one line a day section on the right hand page where he can write one thing that he's grateful for each day. And with that, we are finished. He can use the rest of this bullet journal to personalize it to what he likes. He can do something new. He can take his favorite things from each of the spreads that we set up today, or he can just completely copy the spreads word for word. <laughs> he can do it however he wants. The beauty of bullet journaling. I love bullet journaling and will always recommend it. <laughs> Here's a final flip through of all of the pages we set up today. If you have any beginner friendly bullet journaling tips, please feel free to share in the comment section with all of our other friends. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you want to see my reading journal setup for 2024, I will be sure to put that video right here on the left hand side of the screen. Go check it out and I will see you over there. Bye.